Good morning anglers, it's Baker with Baker Charters, now complete with pirate stash. Arr! It has been a long off season I must say and I am so happy to be back out here again. Need to get back on the videos. You know that I don't like to put lots of quantity out there with the videos, it's all about the quality so I try to do a really good job on uh, my productions. I'm out here because a subscriber suggested that I do a catch, cook, and eat. And I was like, wow, why didn't I ever think about that? I've seen these videos quite a bit. I like watching those videos. I catch fish out here in La Jolla all the time. And I eat them all the time. Why have I not uh, documented more of the eating part? So today I'm trying to do a catch, cook, and eat. We'll throw the cleaning in there too. Catch, cook, clean, and eat. And if you need help cleaning your fish. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. It is the 19th of March. I've only been out twice other than this day so far this season, so it's been a very slow start. The weather has been crappy, but we have a little bit of a break between the continuous series of systems that have been rolling through, and I wanted to take this opportunity, since I had no bookings today, to appease this subscriber who said do a catch, cook, and eat, so here I am. Um, I've got my typical go-to setup, my trusty pen surf master handed down from the great Ron Baker, a six ounce P-Line laser minnow. I'm not even doing a modified approach today. I just have the regular treble hook and no ball bearing. I'm just taking it super simple. Graph Tech 20 to 30 pound rod. Nothing uh, special here guys, very affordable, inexpensive stuff that you can uh, find anywhere. So yesterday we were out here, me and Odie Swimbaits, you may know Mr. Odie, the galley cook on the Aztec, and he pulled up a, I want to say 80 to 90 pound black sea bass right here on my rock pile yesterday. Uh, check the Instagram feed for that one, and um, I might post some footage of that later, but the point is, my rock pile was slow the first couple trips out here, and now I'm starting to see why. There is black sea bass out here, big ones. So... Hopefully I'll be able to get some taco meat for a video and show you guys exactly how we do things with the tacos. Hey look, a seal. All right, been fishing for a minute now, not long though. I think it's my second or third pass here. You can see my lines pretty straight up and down though, not covering much ground, so we're gonna, it's gonna be one of those days where the bite is slow we're gonna we're gonna have to be moving moving and grooving and jigging oh is that a hit oh I just missed one guys dang it <laughs> and that is why I was started to run modified butterfly hooks, but it's all right, we'll get one. We'll get the next one. If he hit it once, he will hit it again. There we go. Oh. oh, I think I got him, oh, but it seemed way, seemed big. No, did he get off? Oh, come on. Okay, there's something on there. Might be a putter backer though. Hey, it's a fish. Probably a little bank perch. Hey, a reaction bite, feels good though. It's always fun. Sometimes those little fish hit pretty hard. Whatever this is, is small, so might be sending it back. It'll be a good time to show you our rock lease setup as well. That's another video I need to make. Oh hey, little starry, gotcha. Ta-da, sending you back buddy, hang tight.
All right, so we pull out our rock lease set up here. 50 pound braid down to this contraption here. It's called the rock lease, AKA the putter backer downer. We gently lower that fish back down. Open the bale once it looks like it's in a good position. And we smoothly lower that fish down back to the depth from whence we took it. Just got strike there. Finally, this one feels a little bigger. It might be taco size. Still early though, so I mean, if it's little, I might put it back just for to be nice. But I mean, if it's, it's always a tough call because what if we put the fish back and then we don't get anything else and then we can't have our catch cook and eat. The good news is, is this one was right on top of my spot exactly when I was going over my mark. So hopefully there's been fish there this whole time and now they're just waking up and maybe we can get a bigger one. I'm gonna be gentle with this one in case it's a putter backer, but it feels bigger than that starry that we caught earlier. Be a little Boccaccio, a little red, maybe another flagpole. I've been seeing more flagpoles lately and they've actually been bigger size. Last season, all the flagpoles I was getting, I was just sending them back. They weren't really big enough. What do we got here? We got a oh, starry. Thought it was a Boccaccio. Another starry. All right, all right. Uh, now we're putting him back. Womp womp. Uh, still on the hunt. Got a little bit of angle in the line now, so now we shouldn't have any issues with foul hooks. We've got a little bit of a drift now, covering ground, going directly south. Pretty much ideal, so hopefully this improved condition will bring us a bite. All right, guys, we are, I think officially, we're on like our 10th pass now, and we don't have a taco on the boat. It's 8.30, we are at 8.37 a.m. And we don't have oh, a Oh man, my battery died, but, uh, on my head mount, but I actually got a red. And that is two tacos for show, so I am keeping that. Um, look at those colors though. Don't those seem a little off? It's not like a full red. I mean, it, I know it's a vermilion, but... The colors do seem a little, huh, anyway. He's eating red crabs, that's for sure. You can see he's got red crabs in his mouth, so definitely we've got that going on down there. But hey, that's one for the box. That's two tacos, but you know what? That's not enough to feed me and my wife. So we're gonna do a couple more passes here and at least get a couple more, but that's a good start. Finally got a fish, thank you. Oh, oh no, F you, damn it. No, oh, he's gone. I lost him. Dude, it was big. Oh, he came back. He came back. Yeah. No, oh, he's gone again. Damn it. What is going on here? Oh, shit. Dude. Hold. Oh. What is going on here? Angry fish. It's turning on. Show me the red. 
Show me the red, please. Oh, uh, finally, dude. That thing spit it out like six times. And then he kept biting it. Finally stuck it. Oh shit, oh dude, damn. He's alive still. That's a Boccaccio. Damn, gained weight right there. Got heavier. Didn't know he was hooked. Whew. Oh! Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah! That's a good one. <sighs> Baker Charters, bitches. Right here. That's how we do it on Baker Charters. Oh man. I am really glad you guys got to see that. I am so glad I got that red. My season is now officially started. That is what I needed. That is what I am, is the Cod King. I must catch the king of the Cods. So that was really, oh, very satisfying. I just missed another one. Here we go. About to get started here again. They're down there gorging on all these red crabs. You throw in that purple laser minnow in the mix. They're gonna bite it. Oh man, I just missed one. Please come in there, get that. I might need to go back a little farther. We're drifting pretty good now. I think I might have... I think I sawed myself short there. Let's get one. There we go. There's another one right here. Oh. There we go, it's fighting, there we go, it got heavier. Right there, it realized, boom. Yeah. It feels okay, similar to the last one, maybe a little lighter, but it's still a good, It. He, he's, he's head shaking a little. It's not a guppy. Got another one, Joe! We are drifting in the perfect direction. The perfect direction. Oh, Boccaccio! Not bad. Got him in the gill. Ugh. Man, he hit hard. Oh, uh oh, wow. Did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? My taco just ran away and he had a air bladder out and everything. I thought for sure I was gonna pull the net out and pick him up, no problem, but tacos are getting uh, pretty aggressive these days. Oh, there he is, right there. He just came back up. Let's get him. Taco is safe. Oh, this is hilarious, guys. I was just winding up because I thought I missed my spot and I was like 15 cranks off the bottom and 10 to 15 cranks off the bottom and yeah, something just ambushed me on the way up oh I just lost weight right there got a lot smaller a lot smaller probably tail hooked him maybe he missed and got tail hooked what the hell happened what the hell he's all over the place oh I got foul hooked no what is this what's going on here 
It is a Boccaccio. Boom. Boccaccio. All right, guys. Thanks for watching up to this point. We've uh, got what we came for, luckily. A little bit of a slow start, but we pulled off a decent morning. We got a really nice red rockfish there. And those Boccaccios aren't bad either. Those are actually really good eats. So we got plenty of tacos. We're going to clean these up and go home and make some tacos. dudes that's a wrap got our fish cleaned got them in the cooler you saw how easy it was baker charters woo let's go make some freaking tacos now and then we'll take a nap all right anglers welcome to the kitchen of captain baker my massive 650 square foot humble abode on the border of vista and san marcos we are here we're off the water we're showered oh the beard is feeling fresh so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some fish tacos and we have kiko man extra crispy tempura batter this is the one and the only the secret to captain baker's extra bomb fish tacos so i'm gonna show you exactly how we do it we're gonna clean the fillets that we got yeah, right here just cut these gonna so we just cleaned them up right now they've just been sitting in the salt water we're gonna rinse them off we're gonna make an ice bath we're gonna make some batter we're gonna make some sally sauce oh it's gonna be great so let's get started All right, so what I've done here is I've taken my fillets that we just cleaned off the boat. I rinsed them in cold, fresh water. I removed the little skin tags that were on them because when I fillet your fish on the boat, it's required that I leave little skin patches on there in case we get stopped by the uh, CDFW. They wanna be able to verify fillet length and species type and whatnot. So we've cleaned them, we've rinsed them, we've made sure that they're all good to go. And as soon as we have made sure that they are 100% dry, we're gonna go ahead and cut them into like little finger-sized strips, little fish sticks, if you will. We're gonna make our batter and we're gonna continue on here. Here we go. Oh man, look at those prime little fish fingers. We're gonna go ahead and throw those in the fridge really quick while we go ahead and make our batter and our sally sauce, and then we are gonna move along with that. Oh man, mm -hmm. so fresh. All right, so we have our fingers ready. They're in the fridge. Now we gotta make the batter, and guys, I can't even tell you how critical this is. You have to follow the directions exactly. Like, no shortcuts, no, no, no excuses. You have to follow the directions exactly. And it took me a long time of making this recipe to figure out why that is. It's because of the temperature extremes. What you'll see is that it really calls for your batter to be very cold from start to finish and you want your oil to be hot. It's the, it's the flashing of cold to hot that creates that extra crispiness. So it's very important that you create the ice bath for the batter and it stays as cold as you can keep it. The fillets remain cold 
and then you get that oil hot 350 to 360 and I would say it's okay to even go 370 the last thing you want to do is go like 320 so if you're not even certain if it's hot enough get a thermometer if you have to just make sure that when you put that thing in there and, it, and when it drops it is so you'll see um, that being said we got everything set here we got our ice let's get going very important this is three quarters cup ice cold water start with ice cold water This is also important. These ratios need to be really close. Three quarters cup ice cold water, one cup mix. Has to be really good. You'll know you're doing it right when immediately when you pour the water or you pour the mix over the water, it turns into almost like a it tries to turn into a paste right away. That's how you know you're doing it good. Cold water, refrigerated ice bath, it turns into a nice thick paste. This stuff sh should be really thick. Like when you're whisking it around with a spoon, you should almost feel like, like you're getting a workout. You know, this is really, really, really thick. When it's nice and cold and dense, you want to make sure it is very thoroughly mixed. You do not want there to be any air bubbles. You don't want there to be the slightest bit of inconsistency. Scrape the sides, everything. I would basically equate it to pancake batter. You almost want it to look like pancake batter, but like little bit thinner, not too much thicker. This looks pretty good. You know what? I think I may have shied on the batter a little bit. I'm gonna go a little bit thicker just because I I didn't use a spoon to level my measuring cup. And I'm telling you, it needs to be exact. So I'm just gonna go like that. The other thing is if you're going to vary from the recipe at all, make sure any variance is like microscopic, like because the littlest bit makes, you know, little bit goes a long way. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. All right, guys, we're on to the Sally sauce part. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, there's like a couple parts to a fish taco, right? You've got an apparatus that holds the taco, something like a tortilla, you know, something like that. And then you've got the filet, the sauce, the cabbage, maybe a piece of avocado, whatever, right? But to me, what makes a taco is the filet itself and the sauce. And that's kind of really it. Everything else is just filler. So, this is a recipe that's kind of been handed down from my grandma to the dad to, you know, me and my siblings and that sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's kind of a big deal when it comes to making the sauce. Um, this is kind of a generic thing as far as make it to taste. My sister's probably going to be like, oh my God, no, you can't tell everyone the family secret, but it doesn't really matter because if you Google it, I'm sure at some point, somebody made it before my grandparents. It's not like a big deal, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some sour cream. We're gonna take some mayo. We're gonna go about 50-50 on that. We're gonna add a healthy amount of garlic. Um, my sister likes to take the fresh cloves and crush them with a garlic press to get it like, you know, that really pasty garlic like that. If you get like minced garlic, it's fine. As long as it's nice and fresh, you're fine. Again, 
It's all about the ingredients. And then lots of limes, because you're gonna need a lot of lime juice. The ratio is about 50-50 on the sour cream and the mayo. That's what you're gonna wanna do there. And then you wanna thin it out with your lime juice because when you mix those two things together, it's still gonna be kind of pasty. You get, you're gonna to need to add a pretty substantial amount of uh, lime juice to like thin it out and make it, you know, kind of whippy. Healthy amount of garlic, again, can't even tell you how important that is. Put that in there. Ooh, and then last but not least, you want the, oh, where'd it go? <clears throat> Cilantro. Chop that stuff up mix it up in there and that's your sally sauce so we're going to make that and then while we're doing the sally sauce we're going to pour some oil in the pan we're going to start getting that simmering as well so that way we can uh, get right to it because our batter is already chilling we whipped it up really nice those air bubbles are coming out it's getting nice and cold really cold again i can't tell you how important that is it took me a while to realize that's the thing the hot and the cold together is what makes the crispy, so you have to get it really cold. Very important that you follow the directions exactly. Exactly. All right, so we did the sour cream, the mayonnaise, the garlic. We put in a very good amount of cilantro, and you could see for how much um, mixture I had there. I did not hold back on any of the other active ingredients. You put a lot of cilantro, you put a lot of garlic. The last thing we need to do, cut up some limes and thin that texture out to where it's like a really thin, like kind of like a pancake batter similar to the batter that we just made for the tacos you want it to be nice and uh nice and runny like it's really chunky right now so you really want it to be like to just go on there nice and you know good so we need to use some lime juice for that so here we go Here is about the point where you start doing like little bits of taste test on it. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty good. I think I'm good on the lines. Oh, you know what? I think that's I think that's pretty good. I don't know if I need to do anything to it. You want to make sure that, uh, you know, obviously all pans are different. Just make sure the filet has enough room to float. So in this pan, you know, I'm giving it about three quarters of an inch, varies per pan, but yeah, just make sure you can get a full, you know. All right, my oil is heating up. So right now when your oil is heating up, your sauce is ready, filet is ready, batter is ready, everything's ready. You just wanna make sure that you have a plate with paper mm -hmm. towels ready to go because as soon as those things come off of the oil, you need to go right there and then immediately you have to hit them with salt. It is very important that you hit them with salt immediately when they come off because the scalding hot oil will dissolve that salt and bring it right into the meat and or rather the 
whatever it is, you know what I'm saying. It's gonna just absorb it right into the filet. So you're gonna have the most freshest filet off the water from Baker Charters, splashed with salt, hit with the Sally sauce, with the best batter. Oh man, you can't even imagine the crispiness, the flavor, the mouthfeel that you are about to experience because we also have da, 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 avocados and when it comes to the mouthfeel you can add a wide variety of mixes but I like I, I prefer to use this dull chopped mix because it has a wide variety of greens green leaf green cabbage kale red cabbage all you know, all the stuff. Anyway, it's just for mouthfeel. Like I said earlier, it's all about the filet and the sauce. This is the best sauce you could make, in my opinion. Some form of Sally sauce. 50-50 sour cream, cilantro, garlic, and lime juice. Just make sure it's nice and runny with that lime. Oh yeah, that is where it is at. The wife approved. Remember, Gina said, Gina said it was the best Sally sauce she's ever had. Just remember that. Ooh, I almost forgot one of the most important things. Cotija cheese. Oh, how could I forget the Cotija? Ugh. All right guys, it's game time. Our batter's ready, our fish is ready. The Sally sauce is ready. The wife approved it, which is the most important thing. So here we go. It's the home stretch time. All we have to do is make sure these things turn out golden brown and we have the best taco you could ever hope to ever have. So here we go. Alright, here we go. This is important here. Make sure that these fingers are completely covered in ice cold batter. In case you can't tell by now, it's important that this batter is cold. The <laughs> instructions say ice cold water. Use an ice bath. All of that stuff. Make sure those things are nice and lathered up. All right, so you get the idea. The fillets are cooking. They're golden brown. You got I can't on, wait anymore. You got them cooked on both sides. My wife smelled the gorgeousness from the other room. Oh! Holy Jesus Moses! That is the most violent oil explosion I have ever experienced. Holy shiznizzle. Ow! Okay. Oh! Glad that got caught on video. Finally, the culmination of all of our hard work. Fishing, waking up early, catching fish, drinking, and cooking, and cleaning. 
so much work. Hmm. So, so worth it. You need to have these tacos in your life. Mm. <clears throat> Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for Yellowtail and Tuna Catch Cooking Eats. <laughs>